Hello and welcome or welcome back to Bookmark Chronicles. Today I'm doing part two of book and wine tastings. I do not have a beverage with me today because it's 11 a.m. during the week and I'm working. So no drink this time, but once again, I will go through six wines and give you my first impression in a book that I had the same reaction to. If you are interested in trying naked wines, I will have my referral code down in the description. Again, you will get a box of 13 wines. It can be a mix or all reds or all white, but you cannot specifically choose which wines go into that first box. I will say the second half went a little bit better than the first half, so at least we have that going for us right now. Let me also say that I probably will not pronounce some of these correctly. I'm going to try, but bear with me. I will also, again, put tasting notes and stuff up if that's interesting to anybody. The first one that I had is Coates de Rhone. Don't think I said that right, but when I took the first sip of this one, my reaction was, you know, like, it's okay, nothing great, nothing special. And that reminded me of The Guest List by Lucy Foley. This book was so hyped. Everyone talked about it. Everyone compared it to And Then There Were None and it's just so great. So I finally got to it this year and I was just like, this is mid. I don't understand the obsession. I feel like the takeaway that I had from reading that book was the audacity of white men and I didn't need that. So I, I, I don't care, it, I didn't need that in my life. Next wine that I had was Falangina. This was another white wine that was also white when I took the first sip, my first thought was, that's terrible. And that reminded me of The Echo Wife by Sarah Gailey. I was so excited about this book, right? And then I started reading it and I was just like, wow, this is not what I expected. And also what the fuck? And then so many people love this book and I genuinely do not understand it because I feel like we came away from the book with different things. I have questions. I have concerns. I need answers that I never got. I do have a drunk book review of The Echo Wife, so I will have that linked in the cards and in the description for you. I also tried to give Sarah Gailey a second chance and I ended up DNFing that book. Not good. I'm pretty sure I gave The Echo Wife one and a half stars. So that's what I would also rate this wine. The next wine that I had is called Rumpus and on the back of the bottle it says that Rumpus means disorganized, chaotic, a focus purity of flavors. I'm not sure that makes any sense to me, but whatever. This is a red wine, and when I took the first sip, I was like, that's actually pretty good. Perhaps my expectations were low because of last time, but I actually enjoyed this one, and that reminded me of Little Thieves by Margaret Owen. Now, I did use Painted Devils in my first video, and it wasn't, uh, wasn't in a good way but little thieves i really enjoyed i had heard good things about it and i went into it kind of with low expectations but then i ended up having such a fun time i loved the world and the magic character the little myth but i ended up having a really good time with it i rated it at four and a half stars which is much higher than i expected and just like this wine it exceeded my expectations then we have the rebel which is a merlot and i this might have been my first time drinking a merlot um, this label is also called Rocket Like a Redhead, so I'll show you that. But because this is my first time drinking a Merlot, I wasn't expecting to like it just because I, I can be iffy on red wine sometimes, but I didn't think I was going to like it and then I did and I wasn't mad about it and that reminded me of Sinful Vow by Asia Monique. I was intrigued by this because Heather had talked about it, talked about how this is a series of companion novels following different members of black mafia families and I was like I am intrigued so I started reading it and right off the bat I was like I think I'm gonna love this and I have so now I'm caught up in the series I've read the first six books I have a series review of the first five books and it's been such a fun time. So that's how I felt about this wine. Honestly, I don't think I know many people who drink Merlot or like when we're out, that's their go-to. So I really didn't know what to expect and it was definitely worth a shot. So this next wine is another red and it's a Cabernet Sauvignon, which typically is okay for me. I think I had one in the first video and I was like, this is 
this was not good. But this one is called Millier, I think. And for this one, when I took that first sip, I was like, oh, that's good, you know? So for me, that reminded me of Black Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse because I wasn't sure if I wanted to read that book. I was very on the fence about it, even though I had heard good things from other people. I also just like didn't know what it was about to be totally honest. Like, even now, I can't really describe to you what that book is about. But when I started reading it, I was like, I'm intrigued. This is good. And then I kept reading and it ended up being a five star. So we love good surprises. And then my, oh wait, did I show that one? I don't think I showed the bottle for that one. So if I didn't, here you go. And then the last one is Rosé of Pinot Noir. Now I typically like Rosé and I thought that I was gonna like this one too. Not only that, but this, this was the bonus bottle. So it's fucking huge. So when I took the first sip, I was like, okay, this is good. Then I kept drinking it, and the more I drank it, the less I liked it. So this one to me felt like a failed five-star prediction, and that's exactly how I felt about Fury Born by Claire Legrand. I had heard such good things about it from people that I trust, and I was like, I want to enjoy this too. So I went into it with high hopes, and I was intrigued, but things just weren't adding up. Something was off, you know, just didn't feel right. And then I tried to read the second book and I ended up DNFing that one. So unfortunately, it just didn't work out for me and it did not meet my expectations. So those are all of my book and wine pairings this time around. I did actually just place another order for a six pack and I think it was like the Sweet Tooth box or something like that. So it's like dessert wines. I'm very excited to try those. Hopefully I enjoy them. Maybe we'll do a part three, who knows? Once again, shout out to Ed from Read and Be Mindful on Instagram for this idea. Let me know how you feel about this round of wine pairings. Let me know what your favorite wine is, if you have wine recommendations. Otherwise, that's all I have for you today and I'll see you in the next video.